David Anderson. We all remember him. Some of us even liked him. Whether you know him as Little Davy Anderson, the curly-haired tyke we knew and loved in When the Carnival Came to Town, or D-Money, Hollywood's number one bad boy. But who was the man behind the pictures? David Anderson was born into the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. His mother, a successful caterer, and his father, that guy who held the light reflectors. You might say he was built for the business. David made movies since he was a babe in arms. His breakout film came in the eighth grade, during the era of silent films. Paid for from his own pocket, the result, Jimmy, was an instant fan favorite. Oh, the moment I saw him, I knew it, baby. This kid was gold, pure gold. I got him on, on the road, on track, and got him a great studio for his next big film. Oh, I remember David Anderson. See, talking had just been invented in movies, and musicals were the new it thing. It made one of our most successful movies, that boy, up at Treasure Island. It really solidified his career. When the course is laid and the anchors wait, a sailor's blood begins racing. With our hearts unbound and our flag unfurled, we're underway and off to see the world. Underway and off to see the world. David kept a close knit relationship with the Muppets, and one even went on to star in his upcoming drama, Lessons in Black and White. Yeah, I love Dave. He helped jumpstart my career, and for sure he helped break down all kinds of racial barriers. Oh yeah. This is Officer Stevens. We need backup and a warrant to search the old Higgins place. Backup? Warrant? This is how we do stuff on the streets. Okay, let's go. Yeah. It really gets to the core of lots of societal issues. I'm gonna turn the radio off. Man, Stevens, what is this jibber drama? Put some real music on, oh shizzle! I'ma put on some sweet jams. <laughs> what is this music? Oh, this is my jam, boy. This is my jam. This is my jam. That's it. I've had a lot of partners in my time, but no one like you. David's work grew in popularity, and he went on to work with other notable directors. Of course I remember David. He was a visionary. You see, in those days, eggs had their own unions, and they had their own gaffers. It was terrible. But David and I, we broke that down. We were the first to have an all-egg cast. Did I ever tell you about the egg baseball leagues? Oh, Yogi Berra and those boys, they could really hit. Well, they couldn't hit, but they had heart. Not real hearts, but metaphorical hearts, and that's what counts. Those were dark times. You know what they called eggs in those days? Beaters! They called them beaters. I once fired a caterer for speaking to eggs in a derogatory manner. You'll never work in this town again, I said to her. Oh, right, why are you here? Death of a Salesman. Death of a Salesman too. Revenge of the Salesman. I remember that movie like it was yesterday. David had already broken down race barriers, and now he's going to break down egg barriers. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say we did more together than anyone else for egg-human relations. 
I'll never forget when old Lyndon Bird Johnson signed the Declaration of Egg Human Relations in 1970-aught. That was a good time. As David's career flourished, he moved on to documentaries, following one of the most highly debated issues in the world today, the existence of Bigfoot. I remember when I saw David Anderson's The Hunt for Bigfoot for the first time. It really inspired me, you know. It made me want to do King Kong. So uh, I went out for it, but it just wasn't the same. I mean, I couldn't capture the realness, the, uh, the truth that David Anderson captured in his movie. Well, we're going back to the gator. Unfortunately, hey. I don't think we're we are successful in finding the said Sasquatch. Look! What? Ah! Ah, ah geez! Oh, ah. Ah. It's Big Oh my gosh, where's Evan? Where's Evan? Oh, he's gone. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Hurry, get to the gator! Unfortunately, during the filming, David suffered an accident that would change his life forever. Bates, what are you doing? <laughs> David Anderson, a miracle case if ever I saw one. He broke every bone in his left leg. Told him he'd never walk again. We were wrong. Dead wrong. I guess that kid just loved filming way too damn much. After the accident, he wasn't the same anymore. He wasn't the nice, happy young boy he used to be and his films were much darker, like Hamster Invasion. It was horrifying. We received several shocking reports from across the globe of hamsters suddenly disappearing from their cave. Go out without me! You know, this is only the beginning. In 2006, David was asked by PBS to create an episode of a children's claymation show, hoping that he could make the show a hit. Yeah, we got that Anderson guy the kids loved, but he wasn't all that great. He ended up turning the kids' show into something terrible. What the heck? What was that? What? Travelers, I've come to warn you of evil. Evil? What evil? Evil fruit! Really? Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, Blue's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show him who's boss. Hey, hey, hey don't shoot me! Okay. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that, How that yeah. hurt! Yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, you do it fun. now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Nice job. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was nice. pretty cool. Yeah, okay, well, let's go, whatever. Yeah, let's go. The show is canceled 15 minutes through. Nevertheless, critics and fans agreed that he still had the magic. Boys, have you read the latest reviews of David's film? Bloody brilliant, I say. David's on top of the world. He sure is. To David. To David. 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 David went on to create his most influential film to date. Threat Level Shanghai. Ooh. Threat Level Shanghai. Now, excuse me for tooting my own horn, but that's a work of pure genius. I mean, the movie had it all intrigue, suspense, drama, deceit, corruption, action, love, hatred, power, greed, honor, valor, gambling, horror, comedy, tragedy, mind games, ancient history. Risk, coming of age, and most importantly, true friendship. Of course, the film also had what is argued by many film scholars as being one of, if not the most influential, innovative, and original villains ever to be seen on the silver screen. Fu Manchu. Hey, gentlemen, make my.
Fu Manchu. Agent McMahon, it's good to see you. It ends tonight, Manchu. This was the last film David Anderson would ever make. It was David's eventual acquaintance with famed pot exploitation actors Cheech and Chong that would begin his downward spiral. You know, he was a great kid, Davy, but his reputation couldn't hold him forever. He got into some bad stuff. I mean, I'd come in and he'd have like 50 boxes of Toblerone on the table. That's over 20,000 grams of chocolate. So, man, it killed me, but I just had to let him go. Later, his stint with Toblerones not only damaged his career, it damaged his health. Too bad about what happened though. Oh, I still remember. I told him one more table road and he would go too far. Over the edge. Over the break. Over the thin line between healthy and dead. There's much more to say about the life of Hollywood's golden boy. In part two, David's time in prison and his run with the Nation of Islam. But for now, this has been an E-True Hollywood Story.